and all the other speakers before me. I'm going to share the words of Jody, a single mom. And then I'd like to make just a few comments afterwards about our recommendations. So this is from Jody. University professor, author, and researcher Brené Brown once said, maybe stories are just data with a soul. I believe that every issue that harms society stems from interpersonal trauma. My story on housing discrimination is found at the two points where domestic violence and single parenthood intersect. In 2007, I had to make a choice. Return to an abusive relationship with my child's father or raise my child on my own, fully knowing that my ex would not pay child support putting my child and I in deep poverty. I know that had I stayed in that relationship, I would not be alive today. I knew that raising a child in a home where violence and alcoholism was present was going to have a direct negative impact on my child's development. Nine years later, my child is indeed happy and healthy. My ex, well, he now owes over $20,000 in child support but my story is far from uncommon. Poverty unjustifiably affects women and single mothers, women who often have experienced abuse and violence at home and at some point in their lives. As, dom as a domestic violence survivor, I am one of thousands of survivors across Metro Vancouver. And the risk of poverty is not equal Significant factors based on gender or city of residence, length of time in Canada, or indigenous status also affect this. Here are some statistics that I have to deal with as a parent. 50%, as you've heard, of single moms in BC, like myself, are raising their children in poverty. Nearly half of BC's poor children live with single mothers, and over 80% of these mothers, these lone parent families, are led by women. As a result of BC's unaffordable, lack of affordable housing and high rents, my 10-year-old son and I are living with my parents. I can't afford market rent on the wages I make. When I applied for subsidized housing, I had a very unfortunate experience with rental assistance through, the, through BC Housing and the person that I spoke to. I was asked personal and intrusive questions with regards to my situation and I urge you to read about them in the report card. The discrimination and stigma attached to the single mother label is pervasive. Single should not be synonymous with lesser. Single mothers are not liabilities to potential landlords. I understand that single mothers tend to earn less and have less stable income as compared to a two income household. And that in general, children tend to create more wear and tear to a house than adults. But how can single mothers be economically empowered if we are constantly met with systemic barriers while not receiving the respect we deserve in the first place? Empowering single parents to economic self-sufficiency leads to successful families and stronger communities. So I want to thank First Call for inviting me here today. Uh, she couldn't make it, but to add soul to the data. So we thank Jody for her, st her words today. Before I open it up for questions, I just want to also mention, uh, as Jody has outlined, the uh, most poor children live with, with parents who are in the workforce, who have paid work. In the recommendations that we make in the report card, many of the stories and issues you've heard raised today from the statistics uh, would, be, would be addressed if we if we acted on those recommendations. First of all, we need a poverty reduction plan in this province that, that holds us accountable to some targets and some timelines. BC has, de has denied the need for this, and it's long overdue that we have a plan. Other provinces have them. Within that plan, we want to see welfare rates raised, absolutely, doubled. We want to see living wages paid, and we want to see the minimum wage go up to $15 an hour. We want to see child care, a, a publicly funded, affordable, high quality childcare system for all parents, and especially that would help single mothers be able to go to work. We want to see better supports for youth aging out of care, as you've heard so, so um, uh, effectively today. 
We want to see a child benefit, income supports in BC that, that matches what's going on in other provinces. Other provinces have, have child provincial child benefits that are double or triple what we have in BC with the early childhood tax benefit of only $55 a month. The recommendations in this report are directed to both federal and provincial governments. There's many things that the provincial and, and the other uh, senior levels of government can do on this. Local governments can contribute, but the big policy changes need to happen from senior levels of government. We know the federal government has stepped up with a more enhanced child benefit. It will lift more children out of poverty, and we will see that in future, st future report cards. So it's time for BC's child benefit to also be, be revamped, be enhanced to lift thousands of more children out of poverty. We need our welfare rates up. As I said, we need w living wages. We need private employers to think about paying living wages. We need government who contracts out good paying jobs to into low paying jobs to think about making sure that all their contracts have a, a pay, uh, their contractors pay living wages to those in effect indirect public servants. That would be in the long term care uh, area, retail, uh, there's some private industry in retail, many of those low wage jobs across this country. That's the polarization in, that we're seeing in the marketplace that's trapping so many families in low income. So thank you very much for, to all of our speakers today. Really appreciate your time and the stories and the, and the heart you've brought to this issue. And we open it up now to questions to any of our speakers and, and to myself uh, for, from, the, from the media. <laughs>